Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen, your host for today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Sprout HR and Legal Experts by Sprout Solutions in partnership with CultureCo. CultureCo aims to shine light on company culture by spreading good vibes that goes beyond the nine to five. Their goal is to see happy people. So how are you? I'm sure this is a critical time for HR. And so we're here to give you legal and practical advices to help lead your company. By the way, we're live on Facebook, so feel free to share the link to your friends, okay? So just to give you a brief background to who we are, Sprout is an HR technology company that helps your company take it to the next level in terms of taking care of your people. We provide systems and support for recruitment, timekeeping to payroll, and analytics all in a cloud-based system to enable work from home for you. And now, we hope to be able to help lift up your team during this crisis. All right, so while waiting uh, for everyone to tune in, I'd like to introduce our raffle mechanics. Next slide, please. All right, so here's how you can join the raffle. So we'll be flashing three keywords on the screen and then you'll get the chance to win 500 Shopee gift certificates. So what you need to do is collect all the three keywords uh, that will be showing or will be flashing on the screen throughout the seminar. Uh, you need to follow Sprout's official Twitter page at Sprout underscore PH. Comment all three keywords on the post pinned on our page. And then we'll be announcing the lucky winner at the end of the session. So we'll be sending the prizes through email after the session before 6 p.m. All right. Okay. So for our first raffle keyword, it's culture. So again, first raffle keyword, culture. So remember that keyword. All right. Okay. So prepare your questions for the fireside chat later um, and ask them anything on your mind with regards to matter concerning our topic for today, which is building, works, building workspace culture during COVID-19. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our special guest speaker. He has 10 years experience in HR industry in America, in America and in Philippines. Um, Sorry about that. And he has worked with Hermes of Paris, Coach USA, and Tascas. Currently, he is the founder of Culture Co. Let's welcome Gino Cabigao. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Good Karen. Morning. Good morning, sir, Gino. How are you? Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Uh, yes, hopefully, we start this morning. And I think today's topic of uh, culture, it's important to keep in mind, especially during the work week, because it's more important now than ever to make sure that we keep our culture in check and to adjust to these times. Um, so I'll proceed ahead. So okay. today's topic, oh, is that okay? Yeah, today's topic will be uh, building workplace culture during COVID-19. So how do we build a workplace culture during COVID-19? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. COVID-19 has made HR the most important job in social sustainability. So whether you're the CEO of the uh, company, whether you're an HR individual, it's uh, key to note this, just because we see, I'm sure a lot of us HR professionals have been dealing with DOLA, have been dealing with a lot of these uh, policies that we have to adjust. And so it's crucial to remember that HR has such an important role. And under HR, you can see that culture is a big aspect. It was something I would say about you know, five years ago, it was more of just like um, a term that was just out there, but now we see it in action. We see the importance of it. And we see more companies focusing on culture, uh, dealing with HR. Okay, so this is um, how you take care of your team members during COVID-19 will play a large role in your identity, as well as your companies moving forward. So this is time to speak up. Um, just to give you some numbers that I just checked right now, the, you could see the scale of how COVID-19 is. There's 9 million people worldwide that are affected by COVID-19. That includes, that includes some of our workers. 
in the Philippines alone, there's 30,000 and growing. So just keep in mind that, you know, it is something that can affect us and our team members as well. So it's important to take care of our team members. I put here uh, San Miguel Light. You know, I know it's a little bit early for some of us to have some beer, but uh, San Miguel has been great from what I've seen. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of what they've been doing so far. Uh, they provided 66 thousand of their employees with full pay during COVID-19. Uh, they tested and they're currently testing about 70,000 employees as well uh, when it comes to COVID-19 and they donated about 150 million um, pesos worth of goods to the poor. So San Miguel Light, despite uh, them being a company that's been around for a long time, has taken new measures to deal uh, with COVID-19 and that heavily relies on the culture. So one of the terms that I heard was that don't worry about your jobs. That was a key term that San Miguel Light uh, showcased and that was trending all over HR, it was trending all over the news, but they mentioned don't worry about your jobs. And they basically looked at that and stemmed from that as well. So cheers to that San Miguel Light. Uh, next please. Well, here's something to remember. It's sort of, sort of, I guess, you know, it could be a tongue twister, but build your identity by building your culture. Build your culture like building a building. So what, one of the unique things about culture right now during COVID-19 that separates it from pre-COVID-19, you know, last year or earlier this year is that digital is a must. So I'll repeat that again. Digital is a must when it comes to the culture during COVID-19. If your practices aren't being digital, you can do two things. You can, uh, it's a risky uh, move when it comes to employees who have to come back to work or, and it's a risky point because of your company as well, because now you have to compete with other companies who are adapting to these digital methods. So build your identity by building your culture build your culture like building a building. And we'll go over the uh, last part of this uh, now. <clears throat> over here, um, can anyone take a wild guess of which city this is? And I'll give you about five seconds to guess, then I'll... So this is New York City. This is uh, where I was born. And uh, this is the stages of New York City throughout the years. So one of the things to note is that you'll see some buildings that have been there for a long time, some buildings which are new. And that's just the same way as you can see culture. You're gonna have some of these buildings, some of these culture aspects that you wanna take, but then there's also gonna be types of culture aspects that you have to adjust and adapt to it due to the changing times, such as COVID-19. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so let me just check my video. I think it froze one second. Okay, so what will you need? So like I mentioned, culture is like building a building. To build culture during COVID-19, you're gonna need five uh, aspects. It's planning, tools, design, execution, and an audience. Execution of plans, <laughs> just, just uh, make a mark on that. So planning, tools, design, execution, and an audience. So let's go over planning. The first step. Planning is your blueprint. The first thing you have to find out in order to build a culture during COVID-19 is, are your mission, vision, and core values COVID-19 proof? I'll repeat that again. Are your company mission, vision, and core values COVID-19 proof? Um, you know, there are some companies who will stick to what they've had before and it worked out. You know, it's a very general category. It could be something like uh, the company's mission is to spread, uh, you know, happiness to the community. And that's okay. But if it's something that deals where, you know, a digital aspect 
gets affected by your mission, vision, or core, core values, then there may be a reason for you to maybe adjust this. And the person to do this usually are the top leaders or the CEO. So the CEO should be pretty much the tree. And then uh, your CEO should develop all these uh, parts, the mission, vision, and core values. Uh, so getting the buy-in of your top management of the CEO to change uh, any of these aspects that they need to, it's going to be crucial for success of the company. However, if it's something that like I mentioned, it uh, doesn't have to be changed, then it's okay. Keep it the way it is and then build from that. So with planning, your team is your best resource to build culture. Your team is your best resource to build culture. So like I mentioned, the CEO you know, develops mission, vision, values, along with top management, but it's a team that could be your best resources to actually you know, grow the fruits, to be, be the builders of the culture. So align there, so the point of this is to make sure that whatever your team mentions, align their ideas with the company mission, vision, values, and any COVID-19 updates that are relatable to this. So here are some examples of what you can use. Uh, you do have employee surveys and making sure that you do get the results. I use Google Forms for my surveys. It's quick and easy. Uh, having town halls, whether it's through Zoom, whether it's on site, that would be great to have like the bigger audience overview. Then you branch down to smaller groups, FGDs, for anybody uh, who wants to find out what type of values for certain departments uh, will help. Then you go to one-on-ones for individuals who may have, may be shy. And the best way to find out about what they uh, feel would work best for the company or for the culture would be to have the one-on-ones. And lastly, take note that make sure that you're always up to date with the health and government COVID-19 updates. Because if you don't, uh, you may be listening to ideas that actually go against it and it won't work out in the long run. So this is part of planning. Next slide, please. More, more parts of planning. What are some ideas that may be considered? So let's say you get the results from the Google Forms. Let's say you do the town halls, people raise their hands, uh, you do the one-on-ones, the FGDs. Here are some things that I've seen uh, team members may ask you to have during COVID-19 to build part of the culture. Uh, PPE against COVID-19, whether it's for at-home use, if they have to go out to the grocery or whether they have to go to work. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi allowance is another thing that uh, you, know, you probably wouldn't have thought about before COVID-19, but now since everything's uh, moving to digital, uh, Wi-Fi allowance is something that may be new to you. Computers and phones. So some, of, uh, some indi individuals may not have up-to-date phones or computers, and for you to, to keep the team aligned and for you to communicate, they may need updated computer and phones. Food. Uh, you know, there's a uh, food allowances since some some companies have company lunches, have company dinners, and people rely on this as part of their budget. And since they don't have this anymore by not working on site, there may be some food options that you may have to consider. Life coaches. This is important, especially now during COVID-19, because everybody's a lot of people are trapped at home. You know, a lot of people don't get to socialize as much, and it could take uh, a mental uh, you know, some people. So making sure that you have life coaches to help out with this for mental awareness, uh, it's going to be crucial as uh, part of culture. Health and wellness initiatives, so dietitians, uh, even uh, work at work, workout uh, partners at home, it's going to be something crucial, or even a trainer to help out with this. Digital methods, uh, making sure that you have the proper resources to communicate and to interact with your team. HMO coverage is another big aspect, so making sure that you have that as well. Next slide. So aside from planning, once you've got the planning all set, uh, you'll need tools. So one of the things that you'll, some, these are some of the tools I would suggest uh, that can help you out. The key thing to note about this is that they're all digital and they're all focused on being quick and efficient. Uh, with, with culture, the last thing you wanna do, it's uh, 
know, sort of just wait around and then all of a sudden there creates a, a story on social media that impacts your culture, impacts your company. So making sure that you get these plans right away, get these plans solidified right away, it's going to be crucial for that. And so see, these are some of the tools that can help solidify your plans. You have Zoom, like what we're using right now for presentation. You have Viber for chats, DocuSign for digital signatures in case anything, any contracts have to be signed. Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, and even Kumu for the local audience uh, for audience reach. Food Panda for food rewards. Gcash and PayMaya for uh, fund distribution and Grab for transportation because uh, you know not all buses are, are jeepneys or tricycles are are currently operating at this point. So making sure you have transportation in case people have to go to work on site. And of course you have, um, you have Sprout Solutions for any sort of uh, payroll and HR. That's also a digital tool that you can use that's quick and efficient. So next slide. So this is the most one, I, I feel it's a very underrated part of culture that a lot of companies, um, need because it's something that's overlooked and so design create material that people will pay attention to I can't uh, you know in my during HR whenever we do culture events it's one thing to have all these glorious plans all these glorious tools to use it but if you don't have a design of how to promote it and something that will grab somebody's attention uh, it could be useless so design is an important part of culture during COVID-19, especially since we're using a lot of digital methods, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. So design on these platforms is crucial to make sure that your employees and even other audiences beyond your employees uh, pay attention to what your culture is about. So here's one example on the next slide. Uh, just like you've seen in the previous one, Canva. You know, Canva Philippines uh, release uh, 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 you know, a, a Facebook uh, thing that I, I just looked about about two days ago. So what they do is they, not only did they have what they planned about and the tools that they use for some of their culture aspects, but they also have a nice, had a nice design on it. If you look at it, they either symbolize part of what uh, some of the clubs uh, signified here are, or they, you know, they put food items for the foodies. So, and it's all neat and nicely presented. So having this type of design can help you out with uh, your team members and with the audience to make sure that they get engaged. As you can tell, look, they have Zoom, they have a playlist link, they have Zoom links. So they have all the tools right there for somebody to just click and they're already pretty much involved in these digital clubs, which is one great aspect to have during, uh, for culture during COVID-19. So once you get the design, making sure that there's execution of plans. The way you do this is you gather your designated promoters. They can include your CEO, top team leaders, top performers, or that popular kid in, uh, in the team that seems to get everybody's attention. If you can get their buy-in with the culture, if you can get the buy their buy-in from the ideas, it will go a long way because now you have not only your email blast, not only your social media, but then you actually have an actual person. So think about like somebody like a vlogger, uh, something like Solen or Un Husa uh, promoting this. And imagine the attention that can grab aside from emails and even Facebook posts that you have. So you can have, you don't need an Irwin, you might not need a Solen. So if you don't have the resources for that, look within your team, the CEO, team leaders, top performance, and that popular kid can just have uh, just as much of a good result as social or popular influencers as well. In the next one. So here's uh, in the Philippines, here's a perfect example of how a top leader promoted uh, good values, a good culture. And that's uh, Vico Soto from the mayor. And in his Instagram, so not only did he use the tool, not only did he execute the plan that he had, but he used Instagram and he actually did it on his birthday and, uh, you know, thousands of likes, a lot of, you know, the HR community was really happy to see this and did promote a sense of well-being. You can see this because 
97 percent he was in a you know another post that i saw that he was the top rated uh mayor in the philippines and with actions like this with him promoting his values his ideas and actually executing his plans using uh digital methods it was a success and the fourth the last one that i'll talk about it's audience so like i mentioned uh the mayor got a 97 approval uh, rating from one source. That 97% was from the audience. So making sure your culture has an audience, making sure that uh, it has involvement. How many team members engage in your culture? Testimonials, how many recent stories showcase your culture? And feedback for improvement, how many people reach out with ways, sorry for that typo, with ways to improve? So you're getting an overall balance of the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, when it comes to the ideas. Did they work? Who did it work for? How many people did it work for? So this is the data that you can use for your, uh, for your culture. So it's important, it's important to make sure that you pay attention to your audience during COVID-19. Uh, you can do it digitally, you could do it on site. It's, uh, there's different methods to doing so for this. So I'll leave it a quote, the next quote. Together we thrive. Coming together is a beginning, staying together is a progress, and working together is success by Henry Ford. So when it comes to culture, I can't stress enough how you need every team member to get involved in this. You want to make sure you'll never know um, that new team member who may have a great idea that can spark a great part of your culture. And culture, in a sense, helps with the well-being. You know, um, we're at work nine hours, eight hours, even more if we're doing overtime day. And so having the sense of being part of the community, having the sense of wanting to be part of a tribe, having the sense of you know, showing up with a team that we enjoy being with or reporting to a CEO that really aligns with our values is crucial. Now, with the loss of so many jobs, it's uh, crucial to keep mind culture just because it can be that differentiator when it comes to the success of a company, when it comes to the success of an employee. So I really encourage everybody to take a look at your culture, take a look to make sure that it's COVID-19 proof, and make sure that you have that plan as if you're building a building to help with the culture during these times. It's crucial for your identity, the way you look back and see your story during COVID-19 and moving forward as a result. And so thank you very much for the audience. Thank you uh, very much to Sprout Solutions, to Karen, to Julie, to everybody in this call. Um, it's uh, always a pleasure dealing with Sprout. And if you have any further questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to the Culture Co. social media pages. And if you see me around BGC, you know, just, um, just wave, wave at me or whatever, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So I'll give it back to Karen. Thank you very much, and hopefully, yeah. Uh, just help you out with your culture. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, Regino, for that informative input. Uh, later, we'll be um, asking questions. Uh, we'll be reading the questions from the, the chat box. But for now, we'd like to announce the second raffle keyword. Okay? The second raffle keyword, it's candor. Okay? So again, candor. So, so that you get to know more about who we are in Sprout, Please watch this short video before we move on to the fireside chat portion of the event. Hey, Paolo. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, come in. Welcome to Sprout. The tap a little about Sprout. We fix HR and payroll in the Philippines. We have a software platform. Companies use us to streamline time and attendance, HR, payroll, uh, even recruitment these days. Where did Sprout come from? Well, I grew up on a farm, so uh, plants are kind of in the background. Okay. Yeah. So show us around, please. Yeah, sure. So um, this is our sitting area first when we are um, entertaining guests. This is our 
This is the P from our logo. My, my co-founder and I are quite hands-on, so we actually spent a lot of time kind of ideating and figuring out how the office should be. So, yeah, that's how it got got to where it is. This is our this is Sprout's North Star. So this is kind of the, the fundamental vision of the company. Um, uh, we really want to impact the lives of every Filipino by improving business in the Philippines. So that's that's our mission and our vision and, and the whole the whole package. Okay, so that's our CEO Patrick Shetty, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So for our third raffle uh, keyword, it's remote. Again, remote. So to recap, the three keywords are culture, candor, and remote. So to join the raffle, uh, what you need to do is to follow Sprout Twitter page and comment these three keywords on the pin post. Okay? All right, so the next portion of the event is our fireside chat. Prepare your questions and just type them in, in the chat box below. So I'd like to welcome back our speaker, Sergino Cabigao. For our second panelist, let's welcome Lester Nazarene Ople, Sprouts Legal Counsel and Public Sector Engagement Lead. Hi, Attorney Lester. Hi, good morning, Karen. Good morning, good morning. Gino. And good morning, of course, to our webinar attendees. Thank you yeah. for always joining us. Okay, so for our last um, and third panelist, let's welcome Sprout's very own learning and engagement lead, May Oreiro. So, good morning, May. Hi, good morning, Karen. Good morning. So, ladies and gentlemen, so you can start asking your questions by using the Zoom chat. Okay, so actually we, we got some questions here already. So, I'm not sure who will be answering this, but the question is, in terms of um, adapting to new normal, I imagine it might be difficult to do away with wet signatures. You mentioned DocuSign. Do electronic signatures like uh, DocuSign carry the same legal weight as wet signatures in the Philippines so that we can total, totally replace wet signature? Is the use of this ele electronic signatures traceable to only one person and readily verifiable? Or is e-signature only for temporary use as in as in lockdown period and similar instances. So who yeah. will be the right person to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll take the question on the legal aspect now. Um, okay. But uh, I would like to preface the discussion that um, you have two um, aspects to uh, consider when you move into a DocuSign or other electronic signature process. One would be, do you have other existing policies, processes, or tools that would allow you to do this? And second, um, are your people uh, on board from a culture and a change management standpoint? So I will defer that aspect to Gino, of course. But um, as to the legality of signatures, or rather electronic signatures, um, this is a question that has beset the legal industry since the start of the COVID pandemic. Now, um, unfortunately, the Philippine legal system does not have uh, an electronic authorization uh, process or policy or rule yet, but um, we refer to what we call the rules on electronic evidence. And um, uh, in terms of the rules on electronic evidence, if there is a way for uh, the electronic signature to be verifiable, um, then it is possible for that particular electronic signature to be proven in court, provided you comply with the rules on electronic evidence. But when you talk about contracts and the, the contract is uh, signed via DocuSign or similar tools, then uh, the problem there is the, the aspect called due execution, meaning is the person who signed uh, and affixed the electronic signature really the person who says it is in the document. So uh, in, in such cases, that would be a separate matter. So it's still safer to when you talk about contracts that transmit obligations and rights between parties, it's always safer to go the public notary route rather than the DocuSign route. But for internal communications, internal memos, DocuSign, uh, provided you have the, you know, the infrastructure, the policies, and the change management for the persons involved, um, for internal uh, matters, I, I think it's uh, workable to work with DocuSign and other electronic tools. 
I, I hand over to Gino the culture aspect because uh, you know the legality is one aspect, but uh, the culture aspect is also equally important. Absolutely, thank you, Attorney. Um, yeah, for the culture aspect, uh, one of the things I mentioned is making sure that they have the right tools to do this. If they don't have uh, the computer or the type of phone that can do this, then it's probably not the best bet to do so. Um, so from a culture aspect, making them understand, making sure that you have a quick guide of how to do this, it's going to be one way to ensure that you get the buy-in from the team members. If you don't have this, if you sort of just say, okay, download this app and that's it, uh, it might, not, it might backfire because not, you can't always assume that everybody knows how to use this app or they know the reasoning behind it. And one of them, just like what attorney mentioned, they might think that it's maybe not even legal. So if you're doing a disciplinary case, uh, that could be one of the things that they challenge it sort of, Oh, this is not uh, a legal way. Let's, uh, you know, meet in person and do it that way. So you have to first get into buy-in and to make them understand why you're doing this. And, like the attorneys, like attorney said, uh, making sure that if you have other means, uh, try to exhaust that as well, but looking out for safety first. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. All right. So anything to add, Sir Gino, Attorney Lester May, before I lead on to the next question? All good. Thanks. All good. All right. All right. For the next question, we have... Um, the question is, how do you get employees involved? We have a culture committee and they themselves are no longer involved in our engagement activities. They just lost interest in building a culture. Does so anyone want to, uh, May, do you want to say this or do you want me to go first? Hi, hi Gina, yes. Uh, first of all, hi, good, uh, good morning to everybody. Gina, Attorney Lester, and Karen. Um, yes, uh, well, Definitely uh, what we do or what we practice before the pandemic is that we have this uh, bus business continuity plan. And also one of our core values is innovation. So we, we preach and we practice adaptability to our employees. So uh, I think uh, in terms of um, reestablishing uh, the the uh, the involvement of our employees is you need to, as an HR, you need to recheck uh, the culture. I mean, what is the culture looks right now? And also, uh, what do we want to go with the company during this COVID uh, crisis? Or even revisit the vision mission of uh, your company as well. All right. Thank you, May, for, for that. And uh, before I move on to the next question, um, there's a follow-up uh, question. Uh, do you know if contracts with e-signatures such as DocuSign are allowed to be notarized in the Philippines? I think this is the uh, uh -huh. follow-up to the first question. Yeah, um, I um, I would not want to say a definite yes or a no, but I would recommend <clears throat> that if you have contracts that transmit rights and obligations between two or more parties, the recommendation, my recommendation is to execute single party acknowledgements for all the persons involved. Meaning if you have one person in the contract located in Makati and then another one, let's say in Laguna, you have two notarizations, one in Laguna, one in Taguig. Because, uh, you know, DocuSign signatures, um, there is no existing infrastructure yet. Uh, there is one, it's an initiative called uh, the Public Key Infrastructure, and this is initiated by the, the ICP. However, um, you know, the, the, notary, the notarial rules in the Philippines as promulgated by the Supreme Court, they do not yet uh, acknowledge the existence of electronic signatures. So you may, um, you, you may have difficulty in finding a notary who will agree to, to notarize a DocuSign doc, uh, document or contract. So I would recommend you go instead by the single party acknowledgement. So two parties or more, uh, kung, kung saan kayo nandun, uh, have it notarized by the parties there and then affix what we call a single party acknowledgement. Right. I hope that answers the question. Uh, it, it, I see the, the person who posted it as Alan Millar. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. All right. Thank you, attorney. So for our next question, what are the important requirements from the government for office work assumption? 
Yeah, I, I think I'll take that. Um, uh, in terms of uh, the workplace regulations in reopening the workplace, uh, please go to the DTI DOLE interim guidelines on COVID-19 prevention and control. Uh, we had a previous episode of this webinar dedicated to discussing that. So um, if you have been to any commercial establishments lately, uh, you will see that a lot of them have already implemented it. So you have the temperature scanning upon entry, uh, the requirement of a field health uh, declaration form, and uh, the, the frequent sanitation stations or, or hand, uh, what do you call this, alcohol and alcohol dispensers. So these are just some of the requirements. But uh, for workplaces, I think it's important to also note that uh, working from home is still the preferred mode of the DOLE. So uh, please make sure that you are able to comply with Labor Advisory 9 series of 2020 in terms of uh, uh, implementing the work from home or other flexible work arrangements that you have. All right. Okay. So another question is, if the current workplace culture of my company doesn't work during crisis, does it mean that it's not a good culture or that it's wrong? Um, I can take this one. It's a, it's a tough question. So if your company culture is not working during this time, it may be time to revisit. So like I mentioned during the picture, when it came to New York, uh, you have different stages, different stages of New York City adapting to the times. So although you don't have to sort of demolish your whole culture as a result of it not, not working COVID-19, there may be parts of it that you may take out and parts of it that you have to insert into that culture to see if that works in. So I would advise looking at some of the major issues, the smaller issues, and you know, little by little, seeing which parts of the culture make a drastic impact during these times. You don't have to scrap out your culture completely, but little by little, um, checking out which part of your culture has to be adjusted would probably be the best bet for that. And also just to dovetail, uh with a Gino, uh, sorry Gino, um, I think what we can do as a nature professional is that to also establish like more on the pulse survey, we need to um, of course check their, I mean we need to be the thermometer of our people whether is it our um, company's goals and employees values are really in connected right, uh, right now and also we need to focus on uh, fostering positive relationships, even though, I mean, as an HR, it's really hard to build rapport nowadays. Everything is digitized. You don't even see your um, employees, whether they're happy or not. But the thing is, as long as you do have pagmamalasakit or even like an empathy to them, just reaching out whether what they need, whether it's small or big, hard, or it's, it's a simple thing, uh, as long as you're really there for them uh, via Slack, via Zoom, whatever it is, uh, I think it would be a good uh, relationship uh, with your employees. And right away, you, need, you can see the transparency, whether they're um, happy or not. I, I'd like to dovetail with what mm -hmm. Gino and May said. Lang, no? um, this is on the purely legal aspect, but I hope it's relevant to the question. Um, you, you, we also have to take note of uh, you know, this fairly new law. It's called the Safe Space Act. No? So this is a law that prohib prohibits uh, gender-based sexual harassment, whether it's online or offline. Now, um, you know, in, in terms of culture, I think, you know, um, we know which cultures are uh, acceptable or, or, you know, at least workable. But whenever you have uh, things that are uh, bordering on, on sexual uh, harassment or gender-based abuse, that's something that should be non-negotiable, regardless of the cultural, uh, you know, context that we are in. So at least uh, that's something that everyone uh, in, in the industry should be very aware of, especially in light of, you know, I, I saw over the weekend this, uh, you know, the Kaki Pangilinan and Sharon Cuneta uh, issue. So I, I hope um, my, my comment on sexual harassment and gender-based sexual harassment is um, responsive to that question as well. Yes, I, I just want to add, I agree with both points with me and uh, Attorney Lester. I mean, another story aside from Sharon Cuneta is uh, Cookies by the Bucket. You heard about that. So that's another thing dealing with sexual harassment and that shows about your culture. So you see all the employees, uh, they're coming out now, they're sharing their stories. And this is what I was talking about, making sure that 
create a good culture because now this could impact your bottom line. This can impact your company's image. So making sure you take care of your employees by putting safeguards such as, you know, um, sexual harassment uh, laws, making sure they're aware about that you're in a safe environment, or just like what May mentioned, uh, building that um, transparency. So you'll be amazed to see how, if you're doing an onboarding or you're recruiting, just clicking that video mode instead of just uh, putting a no face to that person when you're recruiting somebody can make an impact. And by you just uh, trying your best to show that, you know, make it as, I guess, pre-COVID as possible, it does show a big impact. It does show the effort. And it's important to keep note of that as well for the culture. So. All right. Thank you for that. And another question, how do you maintain a culture of alertness or proactiveness when employees are working from home? I want to answer that. Okay, um, for me, um, here in Sprout, what we usually do with engagement, um, just to correlate with that question, is that we do have uh, daily stand-up meetings. Uh, we do exercise um, agile methodology. And even, like for example, engagement, uh, like virtual general assemblies, we do keep updates uh, across the board, every teams, every department, even our CEO. We, uh, he usually says something to us, uh, whether it's a positive note or not. Uh, we're very transparent. And uh, we also practice uh, radical candor, actually, by Kim Smith. Uh, this is uh, the care personally and challenging directly. So I think what we need to really establish here is to um, more on helping you achieve the results uh, by... Uh, the, the directly addressing the fears of our employees or even their questions um, and the, about to face the management dilemmas um, here in Sprout. So there. Yeah, I think I um, just want to tag along with what May said, like getting them out of the fear. So cultural with my uh, team members, what we do before we get to, uh, you know, more of the work and to get this productivity uh, mindset is to talk about the basics, um, talking about something such as, oh, did you, uh, you know, I was showcasing the, the fake sushi, the trending that we did, and starting off with something that's relatable to them. That's uh, something that, you know, can get their mind going and builds that relatability factor. So TikTok dances, uh, you can do uh, the recent trends, anything on Netflix, and building that conversation from there can help out with that uh, mindset of being productive because now you already established this sort of happy mindset and people have a more likelihood to be productive as a result of that. So don't forget about the basics. Don't forget about the little things that can help out with the bigger things such as productivity at work. So just wanted to add that on. All right, okay. So for our next question, so what are Sprout's initiatives to keep their workplace culture alive and strong? Go May. <laughs> okay, I'll take this one, of course. So first, uh, what we do here is um, we are really taking into consideration like instilling the vision mission or the North Star. Uh, on their first day, what, as what I've said uh, before from my HR webinars is that we, we wanted to really have this culture fitting. So, kumbaga, for example, if the mindset of an employee or a newly hired candidate is not really connected with what the goals of the company, there will be a disruption there, right? It's not just hiring people with the, the fit. Um, qualifications. Eh. We really need to also take more into consideration their values in life, also in, in, in their work ethics. And also from there, what we start is more on adaptability again. Um, in their uh, onboarding, before it's face-to-face, -face, but now it's virtually, and it's hard, but of course, we adapt to change. So we tried the virtual uh, Sprout onboarding system. But still, it's, uh, it's four days. And then after that, what we also initiate is to have um, general assemblies virtually. We continue that one. And even like monthly um, newsletters and even like games, virtually, ebooks, whatever we, we can get from the 
technology side, we will give it to our employees. And even like uh, we establish like um, the mental health, of course, or even the mental wellness of our people. We are also 24-7 uh, on call for our employees, uh, whether it's a small thing, even if it's like the hanash or like, <laughs> I mean, we, we don't want to um, connotate HR as the disciplinary people or the principals, right? But rather than we are the people operations, we, we interconnect our employees to our management. So there. Yeah, actually, just to add, um, we we have game nights every every month. Siguro mga twice a month, we have game nights. At the same time, we do TikTok competitions, um, what else, picture competitions. I don't know. We we think of different um, activities, especially in our department. So, well, just to just to add lang with what Met uh, may mentioned earlier. Okay. So for for our next question, I think this is our last question. What's the best way to communicate your company's culture, not only during crisis but in daily life? Is it clear? So to repeat, what's the best way to communicate your company's culture, not only during crisis, but in daily life? Okay, I can take the first shot at this. So um, the company I used to work for, Taskus, one of the things that we did was email, were email blasts. We found out that, okay, we can communicate our culture that way. But when it came to actually people participating, it wasn't really there. So then what we did is we took it to, you know, everybody uses Facebook. Uh, here in the Philippines. So we took it to Facebook and it actually did a, a huge change. We got to see more results. People talked about it more. Uh, people shared it. People actually attended. So the way um, it's knowing your audience, that's the best way to communicate your culture. It's knowing where do they look at? Where do they see uh, for communications? What's the best method? Is it email? Is it through Viber? Is it through Facebook? And adapting to that way to the multitude of the employees could help out when it comes to promoting or communicating your culture. Also, just to add, we also have like this uh, life at Sprout. Mm -hmm. So we, we also endorse our employees. What are they doing outside of Sprout? Uh, I mean, we, we usually do work-life integration, especially right now, right? So we focus on like, uh, for example, uh, the Father's Day. So marketing team um, also mentioned our um, employees, internal employees, like how they how they uh, do as a dad, or even like what they do in Sprout as well. So we established more on the not the branding though, but of course the culture branding. It's not the employer's branding, because it's it's more of how we live in Sprout and how we establish uh, Sprout as our second home. So there. All right, so um, our, our, our time is up for this panel session. So I'd like to thank everyone for your questions. And of course, thank you, Attorney Lester, me, and Sergino for your inputs. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, for Sergino, as our special guest, uh, we'd like to give our thanks through a certificate of appreciation and a token, which we'll be sending afterwards. Okay? Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Beth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Attorney Lester and May. Thank you, Gina. Okay, so before we end the webinar, I'd like to announce that you can still get all the HR help you need. Get free 30 days access to our HR and payroll system, InstaCash, and BCP expert advice. Manage timekeeping and attendance, process payroll, apply for InstaCash, completely done by click of your finger. So help your company bounce back stronger with Sprout and get free um, access for 30 days. So what you need to do is to sign up using the link provided. Um, there. So there's the link. So you can sign up there if you want to have a free access. So this is until June's um, end of the month, June 30th. So uh, we still have one week to, to sign up. Okay. So now for the moment we've all been waiting for, I'd like to announce the four raffle winners. Okay. So the winners are Danny Aragon, Arlene Punzalan, Rowena Alonzo, Alonzon, 
Dexter Bugia. So again, the winners are Danny Aragon, Arlene Punzalan, Rowena Alonzon, and Dexter Bugia. Okay? So for our winners, please type your email address in the Zoom chat box so that we can send your gift certificate codes through email. And thank you everyone for participating. All right. And you can also get your e-certificates for attending the session. So here, here are the instructions on how to get them. So what you need to do is to email your request to info at sprout.ph and then indicate your uh, full name, company, and your position. All right. for joining this webinar. I'll see you again on the next uh, Thank you.